Live. Hello everyone, I'm Delix and we're going to be doing one more Naruto hot take. This is the last one, number 10. I decided to milk it one more time. Naturally, this series has been dying, declining. At the same time, you guys have also told me you've run out of uh, opinions and ideas throughout the series, which is a natural response. So I'm going to do it one more time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the views on this um, series as well. Great to respond to you, hear your feedback, uh, disagree with my opinions, me disagreeing with yours, me also agreeing with yours and you agree with mine. It's just been a really fun series. Now to cover the first Naruto hot take, my friend Shazam. Obito is a simp. You can dance around this take. Obito the simp meme is going to be here forever. Even though he's not, he's not a pedophile, he's not, he's not obsessed with Ren like that, but it got annoying mentioning her name many times to the point where people thought the whole war started over Ren's death. And new generation fans of Naruto are going to keep repeating the same thing. Old generation fans of Naruto has said like nine years ago, the, 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 the old opinions keep getting recycled. At this point, I don't know what to say anymore. Obito was not that kind of person. He, Ren's death broke him to the point where this world needed to be fixed. There's too much chaos, there's too much sickness, too much sadness. A world where people won't be in front of the graves, making excuses for people's death. Like Obito wanted to fix everything. Her death was the trigger point where he went back to Madara and told him, I agree with your plan. How do we make this better world? Rin's death is also in a way a plot device, which is Kishimoto's fault. But for the simp thing, I don't know how to defend this anymore. I don't know how to like say that Obito is not like that. People are just gonna disagree over and over again. I can keep defending Obito like everyone else, but the whole simp thing, it's not going to die. It's gonna happen every single year. You just have to deal with it. But regardless of everything, Obito is not a simp for Ren and he's not a P for Ren. He's just someone who still has that death with him throughout his whole adulthood. That's the only thing I can really excuse with Obito, but moving on. This is from a friendly Obito was a horrible villain. Literally just got done talking about Obito, never going back to Obito. But a pretty much decent character, Naruto vs. Neji, is one of the worst fights. It's not a worst fight at all, it's just the ending that that is a bit mixed opinions, and I've talked about this so many times. If Neji won, he doesn't develop. If Naruto uh, didn't defeat Neji, then Neji just, he doesn't really change. He just still has an ego in his head. It wasn't the father's truth of his writing within that scroll that his uncle gave to him. It was also losing to Naruto that changed his whole mindset. It wasn't just the truth about what happened to his father's death. It was also Naruto waking him the hell up. That, unlike me, you're not a failure. Uh, I love Naruto versus Neji. It's a very fun fight. It's just the ending that's just a little bit mixed feelings. But besides that, uh, we've covered, we covered this topic so many times already. Naruto vs. Neji is still one of the best, funnest fights ever. Um, it's not one of the worst fights. I think Swakagi started this drama back in 2020. Um, I'll, I'll have to say, if you... The only thing I have to say, if you hate it, you hate it. But I like the fight. You like the fight, probably. But the ending... We're just going to keep arguing about this until the end of time. But enough being said, um, I like the fight. And that's all I have to say. Uh, it's not one of the worst at all. So keep defending it as much as you can, but we're just going to move on from this. From a story standpoint, it may look like Naruto was a liar later on. Uh, still, people have been debating about that. <laughs> the whole contradicting thing that Kishimoto did, but I don't know. We've talked about this so many times already on the channel. My guy's backstory was pretty tragic. It was pretty realistic. Someone who has been trying to work hard to get up there and prove himself. We all can relate to that. Zabuza and Haku are the best villains in Naruto Part 1. I've said this in my recent Naruto video about uh, the villains in, in Naruto. Zabuza and Haku, as much as we love them, compared to Pain, Orochimaru, Obito, Amara, Haku and Zabuza, at the end of the day, besides their tragic backstories, or mostly Haku, we only got half of what really went on with Zabuza's life. But Haku, uh, realistically, uh, was homeless, uh, had a horrible childhood, his father tried to kill him, and he had to hit animals on the street to eat from the trash can. Like, that stuff is rare. That stuff can hit home because people can people have struggled. People have struggled in real life like that. 
of just being on the streets and just trying to find what you can to survive. That part was real. As for Zabuza, um, he's not a realistic character besides, you know, going rogue and trying to, like, take down uh, a Hokage, which, yeah, that shit happens in real life, but most of the time we can't really relate to that. Um, they're not terrible villains. I wouldn't say they're the best. I still think that still goes to Orochimaru because, like I said in that video as well about the villains in Naruto, Orochimaru, from a, if you really think about it, uh, the concept of wanting to know everything and to understand all knowledge and awareness and jutsu and trying to extend your life more if you could to know everything and the possibilities and the limits of the human body, that is relatable. I'm pretty sure scientists and people would love to do that, extend their life for knowledge. And for that aspect, I think Orochimaru is the best uh, villain in Naruto Part 1, so... I have to, I have to disagree, Lee. Orochimaru is overrated. <laughs> I just defended him. He's not. Gara's development was too fast and didn't make sense. It, we had like four episodes of his backstory. How, how did his, how did his, how did his development, how was it rushed? Fa fast, kid. I, I disagree on that. No, Gara's character was completely fine in Naruto Part 1. Uh, in Shippuden, he doesn't really have much of a character. He's just the support character for the main character at that point, but he doesn't really have a lot of character arcs. A lot of character arcs in Naruto peaked in the original. Uh, I don't know what... I, that's my that's my response. He shoved his point of view on the way of living way too quickly, well, at least in part one. In Shippuden, he made more sense. Madara is overrated. Madara, uh, people rank Madara the lowest between Obito and Pain. Pain's like first, then Obito. Then Madara. Between Obito and Pain, they have been preached to be between the best written villains in all of Naruto. Madara, nowadays, people, I've been seeing people say, Madara, yeah, he's more of a badass shinobi than a well-written philosophy character. You know, even though he does have a great backstory and understanding his point of view that human beings will always go back to conflict, doesn't matter if we have a pause, at some point people will find reasons and as, as long as we can put them in this dream world where all conflict will, will stop altogether, then true peace can happen. Uh, but it's like, still, Madara just, he just... He just still comes up as a, as a badass shinobi, and I can't really change that. Madara has more depth to him, but the public opinion just looks at Madara as the badass shinobi who destroyed mountains and fought the five Kage and nearly killed Naruto and Sasuke. But compared to Obito and Pain, they just they're just more loved more because of their philosophies compared to Madara. But in some ways, yeah, Madara is overrated. But at the same time, I I don't know. He also was really well deserved. He lived up to his title, Madara Huchiya, bitch. Rock Lee was nerfed for the sake of Naruto and Sasuke. I, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, he unlocked the sixth gate by the begging of Shippuden. He could have easily beat them on one versus. One. I don't know if Rock Lee could beat heavy Sasuke. I that's debatable. Naruto is part more of a seinen than shonen. Yes, Naruto has deep mature elements that feel darker than your average battle shonen anime. And I've talked about this before. I love the original storytelling Kishimoto put in Naruto. Besides the shonen formula that you get in all of the shonens, but there is original storytelling in shonen series. You just got to do your best to find them. Naruto does have those original concepts into them. Is to why I love Naruto so much because I've seen it so many goddamn times. I just love it and view it more than um, all the other shonens. I just I love the character writing so much in Naruto. Sakura is a good character, even though I hate. Boruto, gotta say, their female characters are better than Naruto, that's debatable. But I don't think a lot of people care about the female characters in Boruto either, because most of them are filler characters and on the manga. That's all for now, and well, I hope you keep uploading the extra videos have improved a lot for the past two years. Thank you, Lee. Uh, yes, the channel has improved a lot in the last few years, but at the same time, I've been telling people, I'm just a guy who does YouTube for fun. I like to talk to you guys, you guys talk to me, you guys talk about your opinions. I'm no one special on YouTube, and I've uh, I've told this so many times. Like I'm just I'm not an editor. Like I'm not a guy who wants to spend so much loyal ship on YouTube. I'm trying to achieve other things in life. It just YouTube is just something I do for fun. I have improved in the last two years, yes, but I've also rebooted a lot of videos on purpose because I tried to make them better than I ever could. But at the same time, it's just YouTube's just not my thing. I may look like a guy who knows how to do YouTube and looks like whatever you could think of about me, but it's just, I don't see myself like that. I don't see the potential of me as a creator because just, you have to be really passionate to do YouTube. Like you have to put energy, time, and loyalship to your channel. And I just, I just don't have that. I just, I like, I just make simple videos for fun. You guys like them, so I'm thankful for that. And you guys have been very fucking awesome to me. Very fucking awesome to me, so thank you so much. But at the, at the end of the day, 
I'm not a special YouTuber. I've said this before in a community post, like I'm not underrated, I just exist. Meaning I'm not ranked underrated or overrated. I just exist making random videos here and there. And I'm just glad for you guys to be around. But moving on to the next one. Thank you, Lee, by the way. Mother is overrated, Kakashi versus Obito was not a good fight. Okay. I like the first half of Kakashi versus Obito, but I don't like the art style that they use in Kakashi versus Obito. I will admit it. Know that meme and Naruto don't pause Naruto and you can see the flaws. Well, I don't have to pause anything in Kakashi versus Obito to just look at what I'm looking at. I don't like what I'm looking at, how they drew their bodies and their movements and the spins and their turns. And sometimes it's just, it's just distracting looking at their body movements of just how of the art style they used when they use Kakashi. Uh, versus Obito in that art star like the first half looks fine, but the second half I don't have to pause anything to just know that I don't like how it looks like it's not an overrated fight in theory Obito versus Kakashi and the story behind it is legendary Deserves all respect. I just don't like the style of the animation that they chose if they use like the same kind of animation between Hitachi versus Sasuke in my opinion, I think I would have loved it more but that's just my opinion. I'm just not a fan. Like over the years, I started to appreciate uh, Six Tails versus Pain because not every frame in that in the fight looks bad. It's just part of it looks bad, and that's just how I view Kakashi versus Obito. That I like parts of the animation, but like like Pain versus Six Tails, there's stuff in there. I'm just like Pain walking on the water like that. It just it just looks weird. And that's how I look at uh, Kakashi versus Obito. I like half of the animation so, and half I don't like. But moving on, Kakashi shouldn't have the same uh, move as a Genin, but he should have fought many opponents so he could be beaten Obito easily. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that, Kakashi, uh, because the further comment, he still has the same fighting style when he fought Obito as a Genin, which is bad. I mean, this is clearly an on-purpose fight of what they were doing hand-to-hand -hand combat as 13 year olds versus in their 30s like this is on purpose they're showing them improving over the years from uh from getting to Jonin. but i can't really say they're nerfed or anything or i mean kakashi's not nerfed or anything this is this fight was on purposely made to show the same uh um style that they use when Mitato was telling them to use hand-to-hand -hand combat and they're doing it again as adults i mean Kakashi obviously has improved a lot as a as a shinobi. It's just this fight on purpose was telling the same story when they were getting to tuning, so you can see the differences of their growth at the same time. It's like no, Kakashi just he's strong as hell. This fight was on purpose, a copy and paste. I don't know how to respond to that. Besides that, I'm I'm sorry. Donzo was one of the best characters in the show. If I'm getting past my hate boner towards Donzo because Donzo was written to be hated, yes, he is one of the best characters. He tested Sasuke so many times about how Hitachi should have never spared him because he understand why he would spare uh, Sasuke because Donzo knew once he got older he would do a revenge plot. And he's not wrong. And then Sasuke becomes a problem for Donzo. And uh, Donzo exists to test the characters, to test Sonati, to keep Naruto in the Hidden Leaf Village. And Sasuke... Uh, Donzo really debating should you really be alive right now or not like what is the point of keeping you alive? You're just making destruction. You want to take down the leaf, but at the same time Donzo you did some shady shit You took all the eyes from the courses of the Uchiha. It just Donzo tested everyone So I got to give appreciation more to Donzo. He 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 was up there in Naruto. He's written to be hated But still he's a good. He was a good uh, character Kushina isn't a good character as people make her out to be yes, she is Kishimoto told her perfectly fine in like two episodes. We know that she can defend herself. She knows how to stand up for herself. She knows how to fight. She's brave as hell. And she's a loving mother. And that beautiful speech to her, to her son Naruto before she died that always save your money. Be aware of women. Beware of alcohol. Uh, don't fall for the bad girls. Uh, beware of Jiraiya. And all this other stuff. And just, just... You know, life is hard. It's never easy. But you don't need a bunch of friends. Just those you can trust. Like, Kushino's character in just two or three episodes. Holy damn. No, Kushino is one of the best. She's a better written uh, character than Conan, sadly. But but no, Kushino is definitely up there, up there. She isn't horrible by any means, but her desire of becoming the first Hokage, female Hokage, disappears as soon as she f falls from Minato. Uh, I mean, you have a point there, but... I don't know. Like, I don't know how to really answer that. It just, it was something she wanted as a kid, but as she fell in love and got older with Minato, it just, 
I guess her mindset just changed. I don't really know how to respond to that. There's nothing else that Kishimoto wrote. She got older, she fell in love, she got pregnant, and she died. <laughs> that, I don't know how else to respond to that. What about Mizuki, the character who only saw in Naruto the first episode on screen and was then brutally beaten down by the protagonist? I, we had a filler episode with him becoming a tiger. That's really it. Mizuki, she's, he's not really an important character. He was there for one episode and that was it. He served his purpose. He's done. He's done. He's not coming back. And filler, but that's it. But, um, thank you guys for one last Naruto hot take uh, video. Uh, you guys have told me many times you've run out of opinions and ideas. You don't know what else to give me. And, uh, this has been the most successful viewed series on my channel. At the same time, it has been dying. But I wanted to do one more Naruto hot take. Number eight, the last one. Thank you for all of your uh, response, uh, your opinions, mixed opinions, hated opinions, me responding to them, enjoying them, me also not agreeing with yours, and you not agreeing with mine. The series was fun. It was inspired by Joey's uh, series, uh, the Fight Me series. Each opinion he takes and he then debates, same thing here. And I did my own version, except the Naruto version. But thank you guys so much for eight Naruto hot takes. Uh, it was a great series. I loved it. And just slowly it was declining. People were uh, getting uh, less interested. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that shit happens all the time. I'm just glad I was able to entertain you guys. But I'm Delix. Have a good night and stay ninja weird. Bye.